Happy 4th of July to our U.S. customers and viewers out there. It was a busy week in positive price action for both silver and gold. The most bullish moves were today following this morning's U.S. jobs report data. You can see the algorithmic tug of war that popped off as the data hit this morning in spot silver price here. After the predictable stop loss shakeout attempt failed, it was pretty much up for the remainder of the trading day to close higher for the week in both silver and gold. More on their respective weeks of trading action in a few minutes. This week, we're going to examine reports of COMEX copper shorts panicking as physical copper warehouse inventory levels touch lows not seen since the 2008 global financial crisis here in the USA. We'll also look around the world to see who is the current physical copper gorilla. Spoiler alert, it's not London. Chartists were out banging the drum on the highest quarterly close for gold and a decade-long quarter high price for silver recently achieved. Such bullish chart formations often attract momentum longs in the markets. Silver solar demand reports are getting so pervasive and aggressive in future demand forecasts now, it seems to be causing some silver market commentators to make errors in reporting on what is happening in the comics delivery market. We'll try and clear up a rumor that is false but was reported by many this week as if it were factual. Some central banks reported buying gold bullion officially this past month, June 2024. An additional 4 metric tons for Poland and an additional 9 metric tons for India. This gold bullion reserve buying over sovereign bonds trend is just ramping up and we will preview a coming update for next week over just how tectonically important central banks front running fiat financialized western investors truly is long term. We'll also examine just how flat footed westerners are positioned for the remainder of this year 2024 juxtaposed by average eastern investor poll data. All this and more coming up after this short break. Hello, this is James Anderson on behalf of SD Bullion. Smash the like button if you enjoy these bullion market updates. And be sure to visit sdbullion.com forward slash sweepstakes to enter our free 500 ounce silver coin giveaway. Make some room in your safe because a whole lot of silver could be coming your way. SD Bullion's Monster Box Sweepstakes is back. Featuring 500 of SD Bullion's very own Silver Tree of Life coins in a monster box for the first time ever. This stunning silver coin is a highly detailed masterpiece featuring a hidden inscription on one of the tree branches that changes every year. So put on your best flannel and become one with the forest and take your shot to win 500 silver trees from SD Bullion because someone's going to win it so why not you? Click the link below for your chance to win. The spot silver and gold markets finished the holiday shortened week with strength. The spot silver price closed the week at $31.21 an ounce bid, while the spot gold price closed just under $2,400 an ounce bid. The spot gold silver ratio fell to 76 on the week. Year to date, both silver and gold have performed well in fiat US dollar terms, but the fundamental drivers for both are still not reflected bullish enough yet, at least in my opinion. As demand for physical silver in industrial applications is myriad, second only to crude oil and applications in the commodity markets. It is silver's ongoing robust solar demand that seems to be driving most headlines at the moment. The silver market is likely again to be in supply deficit. This will be the fifth year in a row. As such reporting always leads to onlookers wondering where is all the excess silver demand being met from? The United States, for instance, consistently demands about three times more silver per year then she mines and or refines from recycled silver sources. So of course, one is led to look at the dwindling unsecured silver ETFs, which are mainly housed in the seemingly lawless city of London and in the Comex silver warehouses for clues. Registered Comex silver piles, those which are supposedly available for physical delivery, have been persistently rising for the first half of 2024. And this week, nearly 5 million ounces were withdrawn, leading many, including myself, wondering who is taking delivery in such volume. The issue is the comic silver market is very opaque with commercial banks typically trading for either their house or on behalf of their clients accounts. So details are sparse almost always and rumors are of course rife. 
For instance, this week, many erroneously reported that PTG division of SG America took delivery of over 5 million ounces of silver off the COMEX by con concluding that the SG stood for a company involved in solar cell manufacturing. The problem with publicly reporting such a theory is not only the lack of actual evidence, but the conclusion that PTG division of SG America is a solar panel manufacturer at all. PTG division of SG America is all over the CME Group's Issues and Stops Year-to-Date 2024, 2024 report involved in derivative trading in virtually every market COMEX NYMEX makes, including derivatives on bonds and interest rates. So no, not a solar company. SG America stands for Societe Generale, which is a massive French commercial bank who stood for over 5 million ounces of silver delivered off the COMEX recently. For who knows what specific reasons involved and for whom. Following up on the COMEX copper shortage stories of late, we can see the premium spike of COMEX copper prices climbing again versus London Metals Exchange copper prices. The problem for the dwindled and tiny physical copper COMEX inventory levels to come is that neither Chinese nor Russian copper brands are acceptable for delivery against COMEX copper contracts, and they combine make up for more than 70% of the supposed copper inventories remaining in the LME. So in other words, on the far right of this chart, that bar right there, likely near 90% of the world's remaining copper inventories on exchanges can't be throughputted via the comics because China, Russia, bad. So good luck electrifying USA, USA, USA. Let me take this moment to remind you that while the long-term view is surely still bullish copper, we are walking into a long-term store value crisis. And in that world, Gold and silver historically get the premium bids and that eventually go into some sort of mania phase. Moving on to the Eastern world, specifically India, as reported 43,000 investors slash households were polled to understand what percentage of their liquid net worth is comprised of gold allocations. It ranges by net worth when you break down the data, but it's close to 20%. Interestingly, if we simply backtest full fiat currency era data from 1970 until 2024, and we measure it against the S&P 500 and bond markets, we find the best allocation to gold in one's liquid net portfolio has ranged around that percentage allocation, 14 to 18% in this example. Well, don't think too hard about this though. Invesco, an asset manager with over 1.6 trillion in assets under management, has publicly declared that gold is currently too expensive, and they therefore have 0% allocated to gold for the coming 12 months. Apparently, they'd rather be exposed to overpriced US stocks sovereign and corporate bond markets. Commodities, you might wonder? No exposure to that as well. Their 12-month forecast calls for the S&P 500 to basically be flat, 125 basis points in rate cuts in the United States, hence their bond bullishness near term, and partial weakness in the fiat US dollar globally. They claim spot gold will be 2200 an ounce to come July 2025. Jordan Roy Bryan of the Daily Gold's Gold Bullion Bull Market Analog here presents data that doesn't really jive with Invesco's outlook. Judging by the black line beginning in October 2023 and the dotted average gold price dash line of bull markets past, come this time next year, spot gold could be threatening 2,800 an ounce, which would be more in line with performances of past. Jordan also astutely pointed out this week that Gold versus the typical 60% stocks and 40% bonds portfolio dogma has varying histories of under and overperformance, making the case that an era of gold outperformance is about to kick off again. Now, surprisingly to most market normies, gold in place of bonds in a 60-40 portfolio has been a better long-term performer. And we're about to kick off likely a coming decade or two where that becomes the norm and a fireball offense if asset managers don't pivot in time. Central banks are already front-running everyone, and they're doing so in record official gold bullion reserve buying in size never before seen. India and Poland buying more gold last month is just another example of the ongoing trend, both in the West and East, by central banks. Next week, I'm going to be traveling, but I will still release a video on Friday as per usual, as we're going to take a longer-term view of what this all means in the bigger picture. And no, not 12 months out like some silly Invesco publication. More like 12 years out, 
because like Indians and astute central bankers who are front running this all, we know bullion is constant long-term position for anyone looking to maintain purchasing power long-term, regardless of what counterparties come and go in the meantime. That's going to be all for this weekly SD Bullion Market Update. As always to you out there, take great care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and share it with those you love. Subscribe to our channel and hit that alert button so you know when we publish new bullion market updates.